Welcome back. Let's talk about. Let me move this thing out of my way. I'm going to poke myself in the face. Sorry. Part of the microphone. Um, let's talk about mineral deposits of the Archean. So, there are some things that we mine under the ground in these mineral deposits that could that really only or in large part um, are due to Archean geology and plate tectonics and what was going on on early Earth. So just let's talk about a handful of things. For instance, gold. Gold is the mineral most close, uh, most commonly associated with uh, the Archean. Um, it's also found in and created in later eons, but it's it's really closely associated with the the um, Archean. Obviously, gold is used in jewelry. It's used as the money standard here in the United States. I'm not quite sure, but it's used in glass make, making. Gold is a great conductor, so it's used in uh, electric circuits, high-end electric circuits, uh, computers and high-end um, stereo equipment and that kind of stuff, and also used in the chemi uh, chemical industry. About half the world's gold since 1886 uh, has come from Archean and, and Proterozoic rocks in South Africa alone. About half the world's gold is coming from Precambrian rocks just in, in South Africa. Um, gold mines also, I mean, they exist all over the world, but they also, as an example close to here, exist in um, Archean rocks of the Superior Craton in Canada as well. Go figure. So um, here is, uh, again, the Canadian shield, which is part of the exposed part of the North American Craton. And where do we find some major gold mines in Canada, or at least in, and or North America? All up in that shield. Okay, so yeah, so um, gold is closely associated with the uh, uh, being emplaced during the Archean. So if you want to look for gold, good place to start is old rocks. There's other things, but that's a good place to start. All right, and we also have these things called sulfide deposits. So Archean sulfide deposits consist of zinc, copper, and nickel mixed with sulfur, hence the sulfide deposits. Um, these uh, occur widespread in Australia, Zimbabwe, and in greenstone belts of Canada. Go figure, here they are again. Um, some of these deposit, deposits, excuse me, formed as mineral deposits next to these things called hydrothermal vents, which is what we see here on the sea floor, much as they do nowadays around what we call black smokers. So on the seafloor in, in some areas we have these hydrothermal vents where heated um, water uh, or, or water soaks into the, the crust, gets heated by magnet chambers below. As it does that, this heated water kind of breaks down some of the minerals and so that heated water once it comes out of what we now call these black smokers, it looks like black smoke coming out of these things, but it's this hot mineral rich water. As that water comes out, that mineral deposit, that mineral, those minerals are deposited kind of on the seafloor, right, you know, next to next to these um, black smokers. So here's another another look at it. So again, you get this seawater, which is soaking into the oceanic crust, is superheated and helps to dissolve some of the metals and sulfur in the surrounding rocks. Remember, hot stuff rises. So this material, this water is heated up from the magma chambers below comes out of these black smokers very hot and it looks like black smoke again because of all these me metallic compounds and uh, those sulfide deposits the metals mixed with sulfur chemically came together and then are deposited uh, kind of just on the outskirts of these um, hydrothermal vents more on hydrothermal vents and black smokers in tube worms a little later chromium is another uh, valuable mineral um, about a quarter of Earth's chromium reserves are in Archean rocks. That's why we're talking about it, especially in South Africa and Zimbabwe. What? So gold, South Africa. Um, sulfides, South Africa. Chromium, South Africa. So that's why so many, you see so many um, different countries, a little history for you here. That's why you see so many countries kind of coming in into Africa in the 1800s to really exploit the mineral riches of Africa. And it wasn't to the benefit of any African nations because all of these companies were from Europe and or elsewhere. And so they kind of came in, made a pretty bad deal for the people living there 
the companies did so they could get the rights to those minerals. So, you know, unfortunately, a lot of countries came in to exploit Africa. And this is this is why it's these Archean rocks with these mineral deposits. Um, so anyway, these uh, chromium ore deposits are found in volcanic units of greenstone belts. So uh, guess what? They can also kind of be found in Canada as well. Um, where they may be uh, formed in the kind of lower part of the of those igneous rocks and uh, and or those granitic intrusions, often as mafic or ultramafic, um, so so um, excuse me, basaltic or per, uh, peridotite sills. That's the horizontal um, igneous intrusion. Uh, chromium is what's used, if you haven't guessed, to make chrome, so it's needed in the, the steel industry. The United States has very few chrome deposits, so must import uh, most of what it uses. So here are the, the countries with the highest um, chromium deposits. And again, you can see South Africa, kind of one of the, one of the big ones amongst many others. So this is what it kind of looks like, these big horizontal kind of dark colored sills um, that we see that are high in high in chromium you might you take that stuff out of the ground you crush it up you chemically extract out the the chromium and use it for whatever process you need to now chromium and platinum also kind of work together so there's one chromium rather small deposit in the u.s um, in montana it has low grade ores meaning it's not very rich in minerals it's kind of it's kind of weak you're not taking a lot of stuff out you tend to take a lot of rock out to only to get a little bit of material so low grade ores were kind of mined during war times when you know we we needed extra stuff and all that material was stockpiled and never refined for chromium or, or chrome uses but interestingly enough those rocks also contain platinum and this is specific to this deposit in the united states Platinum, as you may know, used, uh, used in jewelry. It's used in catalytic converters in cars. That's why I hope this never happens to you. But more commonly lately, people steal these catalytic converters. Um, it's the thing in between the engine and your muffler. And you need platinum in there to help convert some of the nasty fumes that come from burning fossil fuels and the platinum acts as a catalyst in the catalytic converter to help change these nasty uh, chemicals that are coming from your engine but anyway people steal those from the bottom of your car and either to sell them outright or to extract the platinum from there go figure um, platinum is used in uh, the chemical industry it's also used for cancer chemotherapy so um, here's that still water deposit, but you can see the darker gray are Archean cratons, the medium gray are Proterozoic um, uh, uh, shields. So again, still part of this Precambrian cratonic event. And you can see um, these uh, layered platinum uh, deposits are associated most often with some sort of cratonic shield type thing. And then finally we get these things called uh, pegmatites. Pegmatites are very coarsely, which means big, very coarsely crystalline igneous rocks. So if you remember all the way back to texture of igneous rock, um, visible crystals, uh, phaneritic, um, these are extra visible. The, the mineral crystals are so big because this magma cooled so slowly, the mineral grains in there grew to have these big giant crystals in it. Um, and so it's these pegmatites are these very big grained, coarsely grained, um, intrusive igneous rocks. Um, you can find obviously Africa and Canada. Are you catching a theme here? Africa and Canada has got a lot of mineral, good mineral rights. Um, so in some of these pegmatite deposits, you can actually find gem quality minerals, emeralds and things like that. Um, but you can also get u useful material like lithium for batteries, beryllium, rubidium, cesium for a number of different things. So this is what it looks like pegmatite. So these big crystals. So in this case, this is a tourmaline. This is another pegmatite. I'm not quite sure what these uh, crystals are here, but boy, do they look cool. Okay, I lied. Pegmatites weren't the last one. There's one more. So iron. 
So iron deposits. Now, while they're not super indicative of the Archean, it is worth noting and starting to talk about these because they will come again, uh, these iron deposits we'll talk about in Unit 8. So there's this thing called banded iron formations. Um, these are sedimentary rocks consisting of alternating layers of silica, which is you know, high silica content quartz type rocks like chert or even something called jasper. So it's alternating layers of this silica stuff and iron minerals, iron deposits. About 6% of the world's banded iron formations were deposited during the Archean. Again, it's not a lot, but it's going to come back again in a big way in Unit 8, which uh, constitute the world's major source of iron, also in the Precambrian, but in the Proterozoic Eon, so we'll come back to this in Unit 8. Um, but they are pretty important. Uh, a typical banded iron formation, again, consists of these repeated layers. You get this silver to black iron oxide, so these minerals like magnetite or hematite that contain iron. This is where we get iron from in these, a lot of these banded iron formations. And again, this is kind of silver to black layer, alternating with these bands of kind of iron poor um, chert, again, or these jaspers, often red in color, these silica-based minerals. <clears throat> um, so these, this is a map of the banded iron formations. The dark gray corresponds to the Precambrian cratons. Um, you can see that some of the, again, there's not a lot associated with the Archean. So the, the red, the red here are some Archean banded iron formations, but uh, you get a lot more in the orange, um, Proterozoic eons. So we'll, more on that on, on Unit 8, but again, worth noting. What banded iron formations look like is this here. So you get this, the red is this chert or jasper, the silica based minerals, um, inter, interwoven here or, or layered here with the more black, silver to black, um, iron rich minerals. <clears throat> so again, the, the red, um, the kind of, this is more silver in this case. What's cool if you kind of zoom in, <laughs> excuse me, zoom in on it, you can see those black layers kind of sparkly. That's the kind of magnetite or hematite minerals that we would take this rock, we would crush it up and extract out chemically or melt out um, the iron from there to make eventually steel, which is used to make cars, which is used to make, you know, the skeletal, the skeletons of buildings, um, etc. All right. So again, these are just some mineral deposits associated with the Archean, especially this last one, the banded iron formation. Not a lot, not, not specifically with the um, Archean, but the start of this banded iron formation creation is pretty important. More on that in a later unit. So let's go ahead and pause here. And when we come back, all right, we'll get out of talking about the the geosphere and let's tiptoe into the atmosphere. I'll see you back here in just a second.